Welcome to American Issues Take One. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. And today's show's title is Speaker Johnson Does the Right Thing for Ukraine. About six months in the making that the House of Representatives uh, refused to take up a funding bill to support military uh, support for Ukraine. It was a long six months. Uh, in that six months, ammunition did not make it as it should have to Ukraine. And as a result, Russia has made some territorial gains and has advanced on the Ukrainian territory. House Speaker Johnson, for whatever reason, was very firm and resolute that he would not allow a funding bill to enter onto the floor of the House of Representatives. And that vote for six months did not come up. Uh, recently, there's something we call a turnaround, a 180 degree reversal of Mike Johnson's uh, philosophy, his way of thinking. And it's a question that we'll ask today is, how, how did that happen? How did Mike Johnson reverse himself to allow that bill to be voted on? And uh, reports in the news say that, well, one, fellow Republicans and Democrats uh, petitioned Mike Johnson, tried to explain the ramifications of what it would mean if Russia was allowed to take Ukraine. Also, he had security briefings with the CIA. Uh, Director William Burns, I think, spent some time with Mike Johnson. And here we are today. Uh, we have a reversal. To say that uh, loyalty to the party or loyalty to Donald Trump didn't win the day somehow. And this was, as Jay would like to say, an inflective point in our history, certainly the history of Ukraine, and perhaps the security of the United States, security of Europe, and security for those nations around the world. This is an inflection point, a pivotal moment. And with that, to discuss this topic, I have with me my co-host, Jay Fidel, and my esteemed guest, Cynthia Lee Sinclair. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Tim, Cynthia. Good morning, Jay. Jay, how important was this bill for Ukraine that it received funding from the United States in the tune of about 60, 60 to $61 billion? Well, theoretically, binary. In other words, with, with that funding, it survives, maybe even advances on the Russians. Without that funding, it was pretty clear that it was going to lose territory and worse. It, it might have lost the whole country. Um, but it's the, you know, the jury's still out on what it can do. So this is only theoretical. This is going to depend on how fast uh, Joe Biden can get those planes in the air, uh, what kind of weapons and funding he's going to provide how Ukraine is, is going to use that money, its own strategy, um, and, and going to sort of be reinvigorated, um, have the morale that it may have lost over the past few months watching the machinations in Congress. So, yes, binary. It's um, probably dispositive over the war. You know, just before the show, you and I were talking about uh, the personality of Mike Johnson. Uh, this is the tough question, and certainly probably one for speculation. Well, in your opinion, Jay, what turned around Mike Johnson 180 degrees on his position, and how important was that uh, as far as whoever was able to uh, turn him around? That's the question of the ages. And if you start out with the notion that this turnaround may have saved Western, Western society and the liberal world order, um, then you really do have to ask what turned him around. It was all on his desk. Um, gosh, I, you know, and there's so many theories possible. Uh, one is that, um, you know, he has a, a spouse at home who yelled at him. That's, that, that could happen, you know. That's, sometimes that happens. <laughs> it happens a lot more than we think. <laughs> <laughs> William Burns could have, you know, shown him some real fear about the future of the world. That, that could have happened. I I kind of don't think that it happened in, in a vacuum um, because, you know, you have to take all the context together. Um, it could have happened at um, uh, Mar-a-Lago that, that uh, Trump was completely irrational and made stupid, you know, disconnected statements to him there, and he lost confidence in Trump. Uh, it could be he looked around uh, at Marjorie Taylor Greene and said, she's a nutcase. Um, and I, I can't spend any more time thinking about her and accepting her, quote, leadership, end quote, on anything. So I'm not going to do that anymore. It could be that he spoke to Democrats and they prevailed on him. 
It could be that God talked to him because he's an evangelical. And God said to him, Mike, you know, you can't do this. You have got to do the positive right thing. There is a, a morality, an ethic, a, a religious value involved here. You've got to turn around on this. Um, it, you know, it could be that um, all of those things in, in various measures uh, affected him. And one day he had a, an epiphany. And um, it, it's like Moses, you know, on the mountain here at Passover time. <laughs> maybe, maybe things changed for him. Uh, I am, but I am not sure of any of it. I do not know what caused him to change his mind. He was certainly intransigent for months. Um, and I don't know what the pressure was like, but uh, if you can imagine everyone yelling at him for all this time, um, maybe that sort of had a cumulative effect. We will, in the short term, uh, Tim, we will not know what happened. In the long term, books will be written because this was a major, may I say, inflection point event. Uh, and we will need to know, have to know, want to know. And we don't yet know. Well, he did come out and say um, that it was important for him to be on the right side of history. So uh, again, before the show took place, maybe uh, this is a pivotal moment in world history as far as security for the world nations. And perhaps um, maybe he didn't want to be associated with a name like Neville Chamberlain for the massive appeasement uh, Chamberlain afforded to Adolf Hitler and the Nazi regime. Yeah, possible. I mean, that, yes, that has been suggested that he didn't want to be on the wrong side of, of history. And uh, I mean, maybe that is the part of the, the revelation here, that um, he realized that uh, this, this is going to go to very bad places. And it would be on his back, all of it, a war with millions of people dying. The other thing I mentioned before the show, we were chatting about this, is that um, as an evangelical, um, he supports Israel. That's the, it, it's, it's not the same view as the Jews would have about supporting Israel and, and Judaism, but it is, it, it's pretty firm that the Evangelicals support Israel for their own reasons. And and Trump, for political reasons, he, he also supports Israel. We've seen that. Um, he doesn't support Ukraine. So I imagine in my in my imagination that down there at Mar-a-Lago, um, um, Johnson said to Trump, look, you know, we've got to support Israel. And Trump said to Johnson, yeah, we got to support Israel. And Johnson says to Trump, you know, we, we, we can't support Israel and not support Ukraine. Um, that, that would just be, that'd be indefensible. Um, they're in, so they're in similar circumstances. If we're going to do Israel, we have to do Ukraine. Um, or, or Trump says to uh, Johnson, I, I know you like Israel. I like Israel. I don't like Ukraine. I know you don't like Ukraine. But find a way that we can support, politically support Israel. And, uh, you know, uh, Johnson flies back to Washington and he finds a way. And the way is to support them both because that, you know, that has um, better political uh, ramifications. Uh, and, and Trump lost control of it, essentially, uh, had to leave it to Johnson. That's one theory also. There are so many theories here. Uh, yeah. some of, you, know, it's, you know, I tell you this, it's going to be one or a number of the ones we just discussed. Um, it's not like he got a call from somebody in the middle of the night. No, uh, if he got a call from somebody in the middle of the night, it was, a, it was God that called him. Um, but one of those theories that we have discussed here in the last 10 minutes, uh, or a combination of them, is going to ultimately explain what Johnson did. On the other hand, I would say you got to give him kudos. Uh, he was late. He was way late. And that lateness might have cost Ukraine a lot. Um, but in fact, he did it. And it's, it's a statement about the United States. It's a statement about Congress. It's a statement about the Democrats and Biden. It's a statement about Johnson. Um, we, 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 found, we found the right path, even though we found it late. Thank you, Jay. Cynthia, first question that I asked Jay, also I'll ask you, how important was this bill for Ukraine and for the world, for that matter? Um, I think it was very important. I when I'm sort of waiting for the other shoe to drop somehow, I I don't trust it completely. 
I'm grateful that that Ukraine is going to get what it so desperately has needed, and 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 that we're supporting Israel still, which we need to do. Um, but I have mixed emotions about that. I, I read an epoch, um, the epoch news. You know, it's a very right uh, leaning uh, uh, journalism, and 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 it was talking about why he changed his mind, and it pointed to the meetings that he had, both with um, uh, Hakeem Jeffries, with H.R. McMaster, with the Pentagon. And those were the things that really impressed upon him. And this was after he came back from meeting with Trump. So that was my big thing. Now, how is Trump going to be able to use this? That's what I wonder. I don't see Mike Johnson going against Trump. That's the thing I don't see. It doesn't fit right. So Trump said it's okay to do that. Is that there's got to be something else in this. These people are so transactional that um, because in the same breath, he talks about making America um, a Christian nation and, and those kinds of statements don't quite jive with the, some of the things that he's been saying lately. And so, or, or since this decision. So I, I'm, I don't really trust it, to be honest. I'm, I'm skeptical. I'm grateful that Ukraine is going to get some help because they were just getting, you know, destroyed. So I really am glad that they got it, but I'm not quite sure I trust the reason why. I share her distrust here. Um, all of a sudden, we are told they're good guys when they've been bad guys, like forever. And so the question is, you know, what, 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 what actually could be happening here if you follow that thread? Well, one is that Trump talked to Putin because in many ways, Trump works for Putin. And Putin says, don't worry about it, Donald. I have the edge on this. I have new troops in the field, new weapons. I am destroying their infrastructure. I'm destroying their business facilities. Um, I will win, and, and Joe Biden will not be able to get anything to them soon enough to stop me from winning, so don't worry about it. You can go through this, but it's only a ritual. Um, and that's one thing. Um, the other thing is, uh, a, a thought I had while, while Cynthia was speaking is this. How will we know whether this was part of a, a plan? A conspiracy between Johnson and Trump and Putin. How will we know? Here's here's one way to look at it. Marjorie Taylor Greene works for Trump. Okay? She's dedicated to him, and, and she put in um, you know that motion um, to uh, to relieve Johnson as 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 Speaker. Um, she hasn't pursued it lately. Uh, she and some of her friends in the Freedom Caucus, you know have said they want to get rid of Johnson. Um, if, if this was a plan by Trump, she won't do that. Mm -hmm. and she won't get rid of Johnson. Mm -hmm. And so if we want to see validation of the distrust Cynthia is talking about, the possibility of conspiracy here, the possibility of some sinister plan by Trump and Johnson, mm -hmm. all we need to do is watch what Marjorie Taylor Greene does. If she does nothing, it, it affirms that distrust. If she does something, it means that Trump is mad at Johnson and speaking through Marjorie Taylor Greene. He's, you know, he's taking his vengeance out. But I agree with Cynthia. It's not likely it's going to happen. Okay. Cynthia, um, since the name came up, uh, Putin, old Vlad, uh, what do you think is going through his mind? Uh, do you agree with what Jay suggested that Hey, this this sixty billion is no big deal, or just the opposite that this sixty bill day uh, sixty billion uh, amount of funding ruins his plan for a spring invasion campaign. That uh, the sixty billion will come to Ukraine's aid to thwart that advancement or that that plan of advancement. Your thoughts? Well, I just read some news this morning that says um, without saying a word about it. Biden got 
Ukraine some of those longer, long-range missiles, and two of them were fired, one on Crimea, and they got uh, a, a big fueling station or a re, not a fueling station, but it was an airport where they got all kinds, where, where Russia gets most of its supplying for its troops and all that. That's what they hit. They hit the airport. And then they also hit a base uh, in, was it southern Ukraine, I think? Um, where a bunch of troops are. So they knocked out a bunch of Russia just in the very first day. So whatever he was thinking yesterday, he might not be thinking the same thing today. So, you know, I, I'm not really sure about that. And well, who can fathom what is in the mind of Vladimir Putin, you know? Right. Well, we do know that wintertime is a tough time for troops to advance on both sides. That's why there's usually a stall of activity activity during the winter months. But uh, the thaw is out, the, the, the ground is firming up, and that usually spells time for one side or the other or both sides to uh, move on to the aggressive. And uh, the question is, um, it seems to me that these, these supplies are already on a plane and have been on a plane just waiting for a signature from the President of the United States. Uh, and, and your point is that, yes, Ukraine used missiles that probably wouldn't have used had this bill not been signed. Um, any merit to that? Do you think uh, that these comments have any merit? Or what do you think? Well, I think that they do. And I think you're right. Because we are so behind the dime trying to get these things to Ukraine, they're already loaded up and ready. You know, one thing that we don't hear very many media personalities or whatever you want to call them, journalists, that come forward, they don't really talk about the fact that these munitions that we're sending to Ukraine are being made in America. So all of our warehouses and our, you know, factories and, you know, co the companies that build these things have been able to hire more people. They get more money. These are our American companies getting money to build things to send to Ukraine, right? I mean, I don't think I'm wrong on that. No, and they've been talking about that for a few months now. Yes, you're. But you're you don't spot really on. hear it much. You read. Oh, no, there's another time. side to it, though, and that is, for example, Germany has a Taurus missile, and it has um, been reluctant to provide it to Ukraine. It's very effective, high-tech missile, um, and and there are various countries in in Europe that manufacture, um, you know, artillery and uh, weapons and ammunition and so forth. Um, but if Ukraine has no money to pay for that, that they're reluctant. Uh, if on that plane you're talking about, Cynthia, there's also lots of American dollars in cash or whatever, um, then Ukraine can, can buy various things it needs from suppliers in Europe. Right. And that's kind of where I was going with that, too. That, that, so not all of the money just goes in money. And when I talk to people sometimes, that's what they say. They think it's all, we're just sending these. And if you listen to some of the Republicans and if you listen to Fox News, that's the way they are presenting it. So the people that watch Fox News think that we're just loading up the planes with money and sending it over because they don't hear the rest of it. And, and even some of our other mainstream, ABC, CBS, NBC, and I watch them every night, all three of them, and they're not really talking about it. But, you know, but Fox is presenting that it's just money. We're sending them money. They don't even take into account that we're building those things here. So American companies are, are benefiting, not totally, but some also. So they, they don't point that out. And you can sure bet that Marjorie Taylor Greene is not pointing that out. Right. So whenever she's being interviewed, same thing. We can't keep sending them all these mon all this money. And it's like, well, we're sending them munitions and money. And she, I, either she doesn't understand, which wouldn't surprise me, or um, she's just completely misinformed. I think she Or probably, she's informed and she chooses not to use the information. And that, um, that ignorant by choice thing, right? Yeah, yeah. right. All right. Let's, um, Cynthia, to what degree will House Speaker Johnson suffer consequences either from uh, the MAGA GOP or from Donald Trump directly. Uh, I agree with Jay. Watch what Marjorie Taylor Greene does 
about the um, the movement to vacate his position. Uh, your thoughts about what other consequences or uh, any consequences that he may suffer? So there was 111, I think, uh, Republicans that voted against it. So there's still 111 of them out there that mm -hmm. don't like what he did. So we'll see what happens. You're right. And Marjorie Taylor Greene does work for Trump. So, but then Trump has a lot of different things going on. And who knows what happened when he went to Mar-a-Lago? And so I'm I'm with Jay on that too. I think we should watch what Marjorie, Marjorie Taylor Greene and the rest of them do. Because she may still come forward with that loud mouth of hers and nobody supports it. So it kind of depends on, you know, she can make that, you know, I'm still a rooster crowing up here. And yet nobody, none of the other Republicans support it. So even if she's still going, um, let's see what the rest of the Republicans do. I have a problem with Mike Johnson. Uh, just <laughs> from the moment I heard him say that we need to make America a Christian nation. And, and the way he said it made it sound like he wants everybody else out of here. They're not really Americans because they're not Christians. You know, um, you know me and my quotes. I've got a Jefferson, uh, you know, Thomas Jefferson quote right here, too. I do know um, you and your quotes. By all means, please nothing. share. Okay. I am for freedom of religion and against all maneuvers to bring about a legal ascendancy of one sect or another. So this guy wants to think he's Mr. Constitution, but one of our framers said the exact opposite. And I think that's important. And I think that evangelicals kind of miss a lot of the scriptures that are in the Bible when they're reading it. All righty. Thank you. Uh, Jay, to what degree does uh, Hakeem Jeffries um, and other fellow Democrats insulate or protect Mike Johnson? Should there be a, a, a vote to vacate House Speaker Johnson? Hmm. Let me go back to one other thing where where I where I lost confidence and and it continues uh, in Mike Johnson is, is when I found that he was one of the architects of the insurrection. Yeah, thank you. You know, I mean, you can't you can't claim to be in favor of the Constitution, and democratic government when you've done that and you've never backed away from it. He never said, oh, I was wrong. Sorry. He never said that. And presumably he would do it again. So that, that makes him a real breakaway and, uh, you know, a devotee of Trump, unless he's changed his mind. Let me add this, though. <clears throat> You're right to ask the question about the Democrats, Tim, because this is a thunderstroke. This is a, an inflection point that we have this. Uh, we're looking across the aisle. We need Democrats. We need Jeffries. Um, and so... Um, the ice jam is breaking up, even though there's still 111 Republicans are still in lockstep. The fact is that this got through, um, and it may mean a new a new Congress. And if that Congress is bi bipartisan, wonderful. Back to the good old days, back to the days when people collaborated for the benefit of the country, for public interest and public policy and all that. Um, so I think... It's likely, if, if it's sincere and not, not part of a, a conspiracy or some sinister plan, which is, remains a possibility, we'll see, um, that if it's sincere, it means, I think, it could mean we're in a better time and the, the Democrats will work with Republicans and Mike Johnson will work with both. And um, maybe he has in mind uh, that, that he's worried about you know, the, the elections in November, as far as the members of, of Congress and the House are concerned, right? Um, <clears throat> so um, if this new model can continue, the country, Congress, the world uh, will be in better shape. Let me also visit one thing that we have alluded to, and, th and that is Trump himself. Trump himself, who, who falls asleep repeatedly in the court. Uh, Trump is not doing that well. And I, I'd like to see him do badly every day, uh, but over the past few days, he hasn't done that well. And while we can worry that one juror is enough to, you know, force a mistrial, a hung jury, so to speak, not reaching 
a conviction. Um, the fact is that Trump doesn't look good. The evidence against him, the Pecker testimony, um, you know, his his uh, there's a lot of fun on the internet about how he he farts while he sits there, uh, and I, they, all the all the the commentators. I, I, I had I hadn't heard that, and I wish you hadn't mentioned it. I'm sorry, I, and I hate to use the word. What shall I say? Passes gas, but they they have not let him have a moment's rest on that. And what I'm saying is, I think these things in the courtroom, and plus the fact that he seems to be that Johnson seems to be ignoring the Trump line against Ukraine, um, make Trump look weak. And, and and if I'm just some kind of stunk in Arkansas, Missouri, what have you, a red state, um, and I see Trump having all these troubles in court with other cases to follow, um, and by the way, it depends in, in, in many ways on the Supreme Court, you know, and their, uh, the treatment of the immunity claim he makes, which is completely a crock. Um, th th well, it, if I'm in one of those red states and I see all this stuff happening, Maybe just maybe I say, hmm, this is this is not good for Trump. He's losing his mojo. Mm -hmm. There are indications that he's losing his mojo, and and I, I can't support him the way I used to. Okay, Cynthia, um, there seems to be some because of this bill passed, which also includes um, prohibition for TikTok if they fail to sell sell the company to another uh, U.S. entity. Uh, Again, there's some some wind in the in the Democrats' sail. Do other bills get done? Uh, other accomplishments could be made. Uh, I'm thinking of immigration specifically. Uh, now that Mike Johnson has kind of torn partially free from the MAGA minority and maybe partially from Donald Trump himself. I think you're being very optimistic. Optimistic <laughs> that either one of those things have happened. <laughs> I'm not optimistic that those things have happened. I'm sorry. So is um, this a one-trick pony? This is a one deal only? So there's a couple of things. With the TikTok thing, right? Um, the kids are going to bail on Biden if he gets rid of TikTok. That's it. They'll be gone. So there's a, you know, a, a motivation that would help the, the Republicans if that happens. You know, they can blame it on the Democrats. Well, the, the bill is not to get rid of it. The bill is to force the sale. Well, oh. Or get rid of it if it doesn't sell. And they have, what, nine months, I think it was, or something like that, to do it. It started with seven months, and now it's nine. Well, they um, didn't want to do it before the election. They didn't want to have that uh, right before the election. So that's why it, it went from right. five, six to nine, to nine months. Right, right. Or how, yeah, to nine. Well, still, either way, um, I, don't, I don't trust any of this because of the timing. Partly. He goes to Mar-a-Lago and he comes back a new man. Um, what's wrong with that picture? Unless Trump did some terrible thing and he came back and he's trying to figure out how he's gonna say, I don't support Trump anymore, and this is just his first step to get there. This is a man who sat on this bill for how long? How long did he put Ukraine at risk in the process? The Indo-Pacific region at risk in the process. Israel has been supported pretty much all along. They've still had the support that they needed, plus their own, as opposed to these other two entities that are drowning, right? Um, sat on it for way too long, according, at least to, to my mind, for him to suddenly say, okay, and that's where I go with what... You know, what Jay was saying, what did Putin say? Well, never mind. It doesn't matter. It's too late. They can't win anyway. Go ahead. Give it to them. Um, so, I, obviously, I mistrust the entire thing. My, you know, of course, my, I know we're almost out of time. And my, my bottom line is that I don't trust it. And we just have to wait and see what happens. And that I'm so grateful that these three entities got what they needed. Um, that's the thing that, so, but why did they take the immigration part out? Remember when it passed the Senate, didn't it have the immigration thing in it and they took it back out? So <laughs> that's another reason that you go, wait, there's so many questions about this. 
And I wonder if other people out there um, have the same kind of questions I do about it. Mm. I'd like to add something, Tim. Um, you can look at the immigration maneuver uh, from two points of view. Uh, one is that um, um, Johnson said to Trump, look, you got too many impossible positions. I can't support them all. So pick one. If you think that you'll benefit um, by having the the border continue to be screwed up, then pick that. And I will remove that from the bill. Um, and then you can argue that it was all Biden's fault. Immigration is a mess because of Biden and, and try to get your, you know, your, your, your vote. And maybe that's the strongest argument. Um, on the other hand, it also, uh, you, you wonder what's going to happen with immigration. Another metric, it's, it's like the Marjorie Taylor Greene metric. If, for example, next week, uh, Johnson makes another bill, or it gets through on a bipartisan basis uh, to help the border, then what, he's, what, what I would take from that is that, no, the breach is complete between Johnson um, and, and Trump. Uh, that, that Johnson not following Trump on his effort to screw up the border. Um, I rather think, though, I'm in agreement with Cynthia on this, I rather think that um, this was pulled out in order to help Trump, because Trump said, this is an important issue for me. Whatever you do on the other things, I need this. I need to have the border screwed up, so pull it out. Yeah. If it stays out, then that suggests that they're still on the same page, Johnson and Trump. Okay. And if I may, it's it's also they're they're looking at all these people and all this bad press about the way they're holding up this and holding up that and how terrible they are. And they were gonna go down in flames if they didn't support this bill. So I think they kind of said, well we gotta do something or we're gonna be mud forever. I think that's a good point. Uh, well, I, think I think the think Senate bill was um, 89 to 18 or, uh, no, that's not possible. 79 to 18, uh, the bottom line is um, there was overwhelming support both in the House and the Senate for the passage of this Ukraine funding. And mm -hmm. we'll have to leave it there. We've out of time. Um, I'd like to thank my co-host, Jay Fidel, and my special esteemed guests, Cynthia Lee Sinclair, I'm Tim Apicella for Americans Issues, take one, and join us next week. And until then, much aloha. want to announce that ThinkTech Hawaii is moving into a new phase and will not be producing regular talk shows after April 30th. We will retain our website and YouTube channel and will accept new content on an ad hoc basis. We are also developing a legacy archive program to provide continuing public access to our content. If you can help us cover the costs of the transition and the development of our legacy archive program, please make a donation on thinktechaway.com. Thanks so much. Aloha.